All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video on Wednesday down here in Santa Clara as the Niners hit the field for practice to get ready for the Arizona Cardinals Sunday in Arizona. Now, <clears throat> the Niners are playing good ball. They've won five straight, um, and if you look at what's happened, they've swept Seattle. They're undefeated in the division. They own a perfect record in that division. They've clinched a playoff berth. They've overtaken Philadelphia, and if they win out, they're the number one seed with the first round bye in the NFC playoffs. So lots of good things have happened for the 49ers since their three-game losing streak. Now, as far as injuries, um, Eric Armstead, Mooney Ward, Ross Dwelly, Elijah Mitchell, Darrell Luter Jr., Oren Burks, Javon Hargrave, Dre Greenlaw, all banged up to one degree or another. Um, Mooney. Ward, Armstead, Hargrave, and Greenlaw specifically <clears throat> are not going to practice today. Um, Burks is probably going to be out two to three weeks with a knee injury. So Luter and Mitchell are working their way back. They're probably going to be back at practice either today or tomorrow. Um, and, of course, obviously the Niners are pre prepping for Sunday in, in the Arizona Cardinals game number two and Kyler Murray, a matchup with Kyler Murray this time around. Um, the, you know, the Niners can clinch the NFC West division title with a win over Arizona on Sunday. So it is a big game. Uh, Brock Purdy in the first game against Arizona was spectacular. He completed 95% of his passes, and he had a 98.2 QBR. Um, and he says his elbow is feeling great. He says it's feeling better than it was early in the year. Purdy, by the way, won the, the FedEx Air Player of the Week award. Christian McCaffrey won the FedEx Ground Player of the Week award. Um, the 49ers are, are getting closer, of course, to the Pro Bowl voting, and the Niner players right now who lead their position in Pro Bowl voting include Purdy at quarterback, McCaffrey at running back, Juice at fullback, Kittle at tight end, Trent Williams at offensive tackle, Nick Bosa at defensive end, uh, Javon Hargrave at defensive tackle, Fred Warner at inside linebacker, Tabor Pepper at long snapper, and Mitch Wisnowski at punter. So the Niners could be well represented as far as the Pro Bowl is concerned. Of course, there is no more Pro Bowl as far as an actual game. Uh, if you're going to Arizona this weekend, they're expecting a huge crowd in the desert. In fact, 49er fans are expected to account for over 61% of the entire crowd next Sunday at State Farm Stadium uh, in Arizona. So it will be a road game for the 49ers, but essentially it could be almost like a home game for the Niners. Um, Brock Purdy, of course, is right there in the MVP voting with uh, Dak Prescott. You know, if you look at the if you look at who the Niners have, they've got Arizona, they've got Washington, two teams that struggle in pass defense, um, and they've got a game with with um, the Baltimore Ravens on Christmas Day. And I just think that if Purdy finishes really strong, um, and he very well could, especially I think the big game is going to be Christmas night with the whole nation watching against the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. I mean, that very much, very well could be a Super Bowl preview. And if Purdy were to throw for 300 yards in that game against the one of the best defenses in pro football, that um, that could be the final the final clincher for him as far as winning the MVP. So definitely down the stretch, I think you know not this necessarily this week, but next week against uh, the Ravens on Christmas night, if Purdy has a big passing day against the number one defense or one of the best defenses, um, that could win him the MVP. Right now, Brock Purdy is number one in the NFL in passer rating. He's number one in the NFL in yards per attempt. He's number one in the NFL in completion percentage. He's number one in the NFL in QBR. So he's dominating all the major categories when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks. Now, he's tied for second in touchdown passes with 25. Um, he's, he's in third place in yards passing. So Brock's having a tremendous year all the way around, playing really good football. Seems like he's getting a little bit stronger as the season progresses, and he's right there in the midst of the uh, of the the quarterback. You know, the MVP. Well, we call, I call it the quarterback MVP, but it really is the MVP of the league. It often has gone to a quarterback. It could go. Maybe we'll see Brock and Christian McCaffrey split some of that vote. And maybe Dak Prescott slides in there. I think I believe Prescott is the favorite right now to win the MVP. But 
I mean, forget the award for a second and just think about what we're talking about here. We're talking about a quarterback who was the last pick in the draft, who nobody really thought was was uh, worthy of starting, um, and then stepped in for Jimmy Garoppolo, won, you know, ran the table, won two playoff games, only lost a game where he was knocked out after six plays, comes back this year, elbows fine, has a year that's better than ever, and he's on the top of the football world. I mean, the 49ers have found themselves not a decent player, not a stopgap player, not a temporary player. They've found themselves a full-time player, a permanent player, um, <clears throat> the quarterback of the future, hopefully a quarterback that Kyle Shanahan can win multiple Super Bowls with. So, it, you know, what's happened at quarterback for the 49ers in the last couple of years is nothing short of, you know, the, you know, the biggest drama that you can create. They draft a quarterback in Trey Lance with the third overall pick, stumble into Brock Purdy as Mr. Irrelevant, watch Purdy, you know, take the job last year uh, out of necessity, and then, you know, find out that really that was not accidental. It wasn't some five-game stretch. This is the guy, and this year he's continued to progress and get better and better and better. And when you watch him, what makes him so good is his ability to throw with touch, with timing, with accuracy, and he's in lockstep now. He knows Debo. He knows JJ. He knows Ayuk. He's throwing the ball to spots, and these receivers are getting to those spots. You know, Brock is very bright. He's very competitive. He, he gets them into the right plays at the line of scrimmage. He gets them out of the wrong plays at the line of scrimmage. He can make plays with his legs. He can extend the play. He's a great late in the down thrower. And he's got a rapport right now with Brandon Ayuk, especially over the middle of the field. That's going to be very, very difficult for other teams to defend. Why? Well, it's just simply because Brock is throwing it before the break point and the receivers are getting to a spot. And if you look at the precision that would, of which they're operating, not just, you know, on the short throws, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, deep throws um, as well. I mean, in the, in the intermediate, they're just, I mean, they're, they're running that slant route at 11 yards. They're running those in-cutting routes to, to Ayuk at, at exactly 11 yards. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you the number of times in the last four or five weeks I've, you know, in charting the game, wrote down, you know, seven yards or 11 yard slant to Ayuk or, Ayuk, or 11 yard in route to Ayuk. I mean, the, the precision on the Niner passing game is really spectacular. So, um, you know, Cam Newton came out just in the last, what, couple days and said that Brock's a game manager and that it's, you know, it's basically all done for him. I mean, nothing could be further from the, from the truth. Debo Samuel was asked to comment today about uh, Cam Newton's comments on Brock being a game manager only and just said no comment, no comment. I don't think Debo wants to get involved with that as much, you know, if he can avoid it um, and just didn't want to touch it. But I think it's a ridiculous comment. I really do. I think, uh, you know, there's far more that goes into playing quarterback at the level that he's playing it than just being a game manager. It's not – he's just not out here – doing nothing and everything's happening around him. It's not all because of Shanahan. It's not all because of these weapons. Brock Purdy is playing the, the position at an absurdly high level, and he's doing it consistently. And really, I think if you, if you even want to look at this um, criticism, because that's what Cam's doing, he's criticizing uh, Brock Purdy. If you want to really look at it in, in a, in a, from a different prism, Brock Purdy's making what he's doing out there look so easy. And I think that more than anything is leading to more of the criticism because he's making it look easy. And when you make something look easy, people start to believe that it is easy. And uh, when they believe that it is easy, then they don't think that you're doing a whole lot. So it's really more of a credit to Brock than anything that there's so many people feel like it's Shanahan and his surrounding cast is because he, on a regular basis, is making playing quarterback at a very high level look very, very easy. All right, of course, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. And this video is brought to you by 
Underdog Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they'll match you up to your first $100. And thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.